Hello, everyone. I'm really happy. This is my first Tech Weekly, hopefully not the last. I'm really happy to be presenting here. I'm here to bore you a little bit with a slightly less techy talk. Uh, you probably got that from the culture bit in the name of this presentation. Today, I'm not going to dig deep into a specific tools or frameworks, but I'm here to tell you um, about a bumpy client story that you might find interesting or relate to. I also share with you three techniques that worked very well for me as a developer to help influence a DevSec culture in past projects. Before we start, I would like to make a big disclaimer. I'm not a security expert at all. I'm just a developer that is interested in building security into my own applications. And my tech advisory side also has me interested in the cultural bit of the uh, tech organizations. So this is why this talk. The story starts with something you rarely see with clients, an urgent need and a hard deadline. These two things are pretty uncommon, right? Of course not. I would like to uh, present to you, so the story starts with actually two uh, different companies called Doe Inc. and Jane Inc. That's how we will call them. They decided to join forces and become bigger to become, you know, more competitive in their own market. So they merged. And when they merged, they also decided they didn't want to keep any of their names. So they wanted a completely new brand called, let's call it Big Inc. And so uh, the launch of the new brand, uh, considering all the work that they needed to do, was set in two years. So they had a really, really nice plan laid out um, that you know, had everything covered what they needed to do in these two years. But we all know what happens with plants, right? More about that later. Anyways, part of the work that had to be done on their digital, uh, on their digital organization was specifically on their digital channels. So here's an oversimplification. And by the way, really ugly drawing that I, I made. So bear with me on how uh, their digital channels looked like. So what I want you to understand here is each company had their own web and mobile channels in different domains so different web domains with different technologies and architectures as well. One side had a monolith, a big monolith written in pair, um, and the other one had SOA services. Uh, one side also had built all in-house solutions by themselves. The other one had external providers for some functionalities. With this new brand, a new domain was created, a new web domain was created, and a lot of teams had been working for about a year and a half to unify a lot of the core functionality and create also new products in this new domain and this new, uh, new part, and, and changing the look and feel of, the, uh, of the, their sites. Uh, remember the plan? Well, uh, around six months before the new brand launch, the company realized they didn't have yet built a critical connector that they needed, a critical component. What was that? Well, the unified logging experience. I put it here a single sign-on with an asterisk because it wasn't really a full single sign-on solution, but they called it, we want to have a single sign-on experience for our users. So my team was um, then uh, composed with consultants. I was a consultant from, from another company, not Futurize, and devs from the uh, organization, Big Inc. We were brought in to provide these unified logging experience solutions solution, and we had three months to effectively develop it and uh, deliver it. I really don't think I have to go too much into explaining what was the problem here, but here are some of the key issues we faced. Um, the first one is that this was a critical deadline, meaning that missing it could cause huge monetary losses and operational overhead. We understood that uh, afterwards. The client wanted a hack solution, a hack, hack, hack solution. Horrible. They wanted some essentially a proxy that would um, sit in between. So a proxy that would sit um, in between their front ends and the monoliths and the services they had. 
And this proxy was supposed to route um, a login request, check it on one system, if not present, check it on the other. Um, and then once a login was found, uh, it was supposed to also keep the session management so that the user will be able to switch between domain A to domain B and domain C without ever getting logged out. Then uh, here, I have to say, there, there were right from this point, there were big, big red flags from the security perspective for us. Uh, the other thing to consider is that the cybersecurity department was pretty much isolated. They didn't have much power in the organization. And of course, the organization really had a very strong focus on user experience. And because of that, they perceived security as conflicting with their user experience vision. Well, we had initial attempts in our team to surface these security concerns and push back on the hacky solution, push back on the deadlines and the timelines, but uh, this only increased tensions, created friction. It didn't really help. The client was not happy at all. Uh, the reality was that there was no other viable solution that would meet both security and deadline. There was no holy grail in this situation. We had to implement that hacky solution, whether we liked it or not. Uh, but our big question was, how could we also help the client understand the security concerns we are bringing in? Uh, while we are building these, how can we protect them as much as possible? So that, that was one of the big questions. And um, uh, here, yeah, um, spoiler alert. We did succeed. Uh, we succeed uh, overcoming this challenge. And I have brought in this presentation one key advice to you. And if there's anything that you will remember from this presentation, I would like it to be this, uh, this advice. You should start by finding and highlighting your own product weaknesses. I will say it again. You should start by finding and highlighting your own product's weaknesses. It was very clear that by just talking and challenging the, the client about the security issues or concerns we had, we were not getting anywhere. We were not going to solve anything. We needed to consider both uh, the critical need for a solution as well as protect our own uh, product and the organization in the best possible way with the limited resources we had. So we started by finding and highlighting our own product weaknesses. And by doing this, we ended up changing the whole culture in the tech organization. Happy coincidence? But you tell me later. Here are the three techniques that we applied. The first one, understand your system from the security point of view. How do you do that? You should first find allies security experts are your best allies whether they are from the client side or the con uh, your own uh, organization consultancy side even better if you find a strategic partner in the client side in the cybersecurity department in our case we found ours and what he helped us with was to get a very deep and broad understanding about the systems environment uh, you remember that monolith over there, where was it deployed, what, what was the current security state or landscape for that monolith, and a lot of infrastructure details as well for the where the solution we were developing was going to live uh, in the end, because it was an internal data center. Uh, yeah, by the way, this is seven years ago, not so, not so much cloud by then. Um, we also made him feel part of the team, uh, and so we created this alliance by really getting at least one person that was interested in, in getting closer to developers, getting him into our own team. We invited the, uh, him to the showcases, the team demos, um, and uh, we were consulting with him regularly. The next thing um, to understand your system is run a threat modeling for your product. Bruno Almeida already had a great Tech Weekly session dedicated to threat modeling and how to run one. Um, a couple of months ago. Uh, the only thing that I want to mention here is that it's pretty common for teams to, okay, run the threat modeling, you get some uh, resources out of it, and then forget about them and, and push them on the side and, and just get on with your normal day to day. 
my advice here is just don't don't stay just with that one single fixed workshop keep gather, gathering as much information as possible related to the existing current vulnerabilities or exploits and make those diagrams a living thing or the maps that you got a living thing keep enriching them in our case we got ours and we uh, continuously with the uh, ally that we had in security kept enriching it and putting in more and more uh, vulnerabilities uh, that we uh, kept discovering over time while we were building the component hacky solution finally in understanding your system from the security perspective you should identify the low-hanging fruits so once you have your ally run a threat modeling keep having it as a living thing and living discussions then make sure you can identify some low-hanging fruits in the weaknesses or vulnerabilities you have uh, or your product has it's even better if you already have a product over there in production like in our case we had this monolith even better if you can identify the weaknesses that are already under attack so our case what happened was that by talking to the security expert we got to know that password requirements were not strong from the beginning so uh, in, in that organization they were not strong um, they got better over time but this resulted in many many users that had passwords that matched common dictionaries used for these brute force attacks the thing is we also discovered that there were several incidents a month related to fraud uh, people somehow getting other users' credentials, accessing the account, and then stealing assets from the users. But it wasn't clear, what wasn't clear in the organization was whether these credentials were stolen by social engineering or by actual brute force attacks, because they didn't have any visibility on, on the products or the, their, uh, the current um, uh, situation. This one was one low-hanging fruit for us now that you have built the knowledge the second step or the second technique is to put those weaknesses those low hanging fruits in the spotlight and how do you do that my first advice is build monitors and alerts put them in place once you have identified those weaknesses think about how can you uh, monitor your the new solution you are building or the existing even uh, the existing solution that you have in order to identify whether this possible attack vector is being actually exercised or exploited in our case what happened we knew that maybe our hypothesis was um, what if this is the cause of brute force attacks so uh, let's start monitoring for certain spikes in the logging endpoint let's start also um, understanding from the system we learned that Every time there was a credentials unmatched, the system will return 400 error code uh, back. So we leverage that by getting the rate of 400 versus 200 in the logging endpoint, and by monitoring that with an anomaly detection. And that really helped us to detect uh, a specific moments in real time when attacks were happening with particular credentials. Okay, so, this is to increase your visibility over those weaknesses and once you got findings like uh, us like uh, with with those real-time attacks you should go and amplify the visibility of those findings get them share them with your po share them with the stakeholders in our case we brought them to our um, showcases uh, which is equivalent of the sprint review uh, where we got uh, stakeholders from across the different parts of the organization and other POs as well. And we started showing up what was happening, how many attacks we were having and so on. So get that visibility in and uh, start showing uh, them uh, regularly. Cool. So now that we have put those really nice, uh, those weaknesses really nicely in, in the spotlight, the third and last technique that I want to share with you is build collective knowledge. Focus on that next. 
you already have gathered a lot of knowledge and learnings and information that others uh, maybe uh, don't know or, or, or don't have. So first thing is in your client, identify the knowledge sharing spaces. Maybe the client has lunch and learns. Um, maybe the client has communities like ours. Maybe the client has something like the tech weeklies. Uh, in our case, the client had a something called snack time. And snack time was a 15 minute space in the middle of the afternoon and where everybody gathered in the kitchen area and they had a monitor there and some sort of like sofas in place. So everybody gathered there, got the snack and you could sign up and share something as an, in a lightning talk format. And we started really doing that. So the next step is once you have identified those spaces, start exploding them with whatever you have learned. Uh, share those learnings, amplify the visibility, and get other developers to learn about security as well. Share the threat modeling experience. Share something new you discovered. Just increasing the collective knowledge not only helps with people's growth, but will also help finding other allies in the organization that can further help you in your journey and your goals. So focus on, on sharing that knowledge. This is the third technique. So I want to share with you what was the effect of applying these three things. I mentioned we did have success uh, in changing the DevSec culture uh, in that organization. So uh, reflecting back, by understanding our systems uh, security point of view, we understood this security landscape of our current solution, of the logging that was there. And we were able also to anticipate and prevent issues in this connector that we were building. So actual issues that were happening and we were preventing them along the way with small uh, efforts. We also became more aware and knowledgeable about the security aspect, aspects that we didn't even know. I'm, uh, I like security, but honestly, I didn't even uh, know many of the things that were in the OWASP top 10 by then. So you really increase your own knowledge including uh, getting ideas of tools that you can put in your own pipelines and code bases to help you automate security checks. Last but not least, we gained a pretty good picture of the current attack vectors of the old solution. So by doing this first part, our impact was mostly focused on the team, the team knowledge, the team leverage, the team understanding. The second part, when we set up the monitors for both the old and the new solution, we were able to gather real-time data about attacks the organization didn't even know were happening. So we took the elephant that for us was an elephant in the room and we put it there and we made everybody look at it. The organization, they were really shocked to see that we had on average 10 brute force attacks, even more than that. Don't remember the exact uh, number, but we had more than 10 brute force attacks a day from different places. And when this information was shared amongst the team stakeholders, we got the benefit of now our roadmap started including security related efforts. So it was no longer the team fighting with the PO for making the case for security. We also included security related acceptance criteria in our, in our stories uh, that came from uh, the threat modeling. And even more, other team POs started that attended our showcases started bringing back questions, bringing questions back to their own teams about this. So this created a ripple effect. In the end, the entire digital organization plans for the next year, they got updated and they included a more long term and secure solution of the unified logging experience, which wasn't planned before. They were expecting to stay with this connector hacky solution for longer time. Uh, but we did manage to uh, make it more visible and they realized they needed to uh, change it. So now the impact went not only from the teams, but to other teams and even closer to the tech org. The final part, when we started building the uh, collective knowledge, we um, started sharing actively and heavily our own learnings and knowledge. And other teams applied the same in their products because they learned it from us and they started trying out in their own products. This created a movement where the security department was getting more and more involved into the development of, of the products naturally. So here the DevSec culture was already emerging 
and it continued strengthening. Now this Big Inc. organization runs this bug bounty program and is recognized as an exemplary org, at least in Latin America. Uh, by the way, uh, this was there. Uh, they are recognized as an as a example organization that shifted from a traditional siloed uh, uh, tech uh, org to a DevSec ops culture. The ops part not being part of this uh, presentation. So to wrap up, uh, by applying these three, uh, three techniques, we did indeed found and highlighted our own product weaknesses. And by doing that, we managed to impact and influence greatly the DevSec culture of an organization that had security and development silos. This is all for today. Thank you.